Welcome to worship, St. John's Lutheran Church and friends. It is so good to have you with us today as we come together to sing, to pray, to hear God's word, and to share a meal together. With that, we take a deep breath and we prepare our hearts and our minds for worship this day. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like lost sheep we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. All have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace, Christ Jesus, God, Son, makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all of your sins. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
let us pray. Holy God, you turn your greatness into goodness for all the peoples on earth. Shape us into willing servants of your kingdom and make us desire always and only your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is from Daniel chapter 7. As I watched, thrones were set in place, and an ancient one took his throne. His clothing was as white as snow, and the hair on his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, and its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and flowed out from his presence. A thousand, thousands served him, and 10,000 times, 10,000 stood attending him. The court sat in judgment and the books were opened. As I watched the night visions, I saw one like a human being coming with the clouds of heaven. And he came to the ancient one and was presented before him. To him was given domination and glory and kingship that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His domination is everlasting, domination that shall not pass away. And his kingship is one that shall never be destroyed. The Lord the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today we will be reading Psalm 93 responsively. The Lord is king. He is robbed in majesty. The Lord is robbed. He is girded with strength. He has established the world. It shall never be moved. Your throne is established from of old. You are from everlasting. The floods have lifted up. O oh Lord, the floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their roaring. More majestic than the thunders of mighty waters, more majestic than the waves of the sea, majestic on high is the Lord. Your decrees are very sure. Holiness benefits your house, O oh Lord, forevermore. The second reading is from Revelations chapter 1. Grace to you, God, and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. And from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves and freed us from our sins by his blood, amen us to become a kingdom priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, who is coming with the clouds, every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel for this week comes from Mark, the 10th chapter. 
James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And Jesus said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptized you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called to them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers, lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be the first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. This is the gospel of our Lord. Let us pray. O come, Holy Spirit, come. O come, Holy Spirit, come. Come in our hearts, come in our minds. O come, Holy Spirit, come. Amen. As I was preparing for this weekend and reading the commentaries that I normally do, in one of them, it made this comment. It said, you know, we can't read the scriptures the same way we did two years ago. Too much has happened. We've lived through too many things. We are living in so many things. We simply can't read the scriptures the same as we used to. I think that is particularly true for me this weekend when I read that Isaiah text and then I read the gospel text. And I thought, you know, these are saying things differently to me than they have been in the past. The sons of Mr. and Mrs. Zebedee, James and John. I've thought about them a lot over the years because I wonder what it was like for them to be brothers and following Jesus these three years. This ragtag group that followed Jesus around that he called his disciples, they were an interesting group of people. But to put brothers into the mix of that, I think that kind of changes the dynamic, doesn't it? We make the assumption that James and John are not competitive brothers. They actually are brothers who get along. And it seems like that's true, the little that we read about them in the scripture. You know, they left the business, the family fishing business, left it back with their father, and off they went to follow this Jesus, this rabbi, this teacher, around Galilee and a little bit beyond. So it is not actually a surprise, or should not be a surprise to us, that James and John sit down with Jesus, they kind of get him off in a corner, and they say, by the way, Jesus, we would like you to do anything we ask of you. That's kind of an audacious ask, don't you think? 
I never really thought about it before, but, you know, to actually sit down with Jesus and say, we want you to do what we ask you to do, wow. I don't think that's the way I approach Jesus, although in my heart I probably am saying, well, just please, this is my prayer, and please let the answer be yes. I certainly have been known to do that. But here are James and John saying, you know, we're going to ask you something, and we want the answer to be yes. Just do it. So Jesus asks them right back, what would you like me to do for you? Well, they're concerned about the order of things. And not just the order of things here on earth, but the order of things going forward. So they ask if one can sit on his right and one can sit on his left for all eternity. When Jesus comes into his kingdom. Again, that's a pretty audacious ask, isn't it? To make the assumption that they belong in those two spots and the rest of the 12 will fill in the gaps around that. Hmm. I wonder what was going on in their heads. But then I stepped back and I thought, you know, what was life like for them then? There was a complete order to things, right? And Jesus kind of talks about that. You know, if there's a Lord meaning someone who's in charge of a group of people, like a king, there's an order to things. And what he says to James and John is, is that, you know, that order isn't really up to me. That's not necessarily my decision. I don't really have the ability to grant that to you. But for James and John, there's a hierarchy in society. There's a hierarchy to how things go, and they want to be kind of at the top, pretty close to the top. One on his right and one on his left. But then Jesus does what Jesus does. He turns the world upside down. He talks about opposites, right? That if you are going to be the leader you have to be a servant. You have to be willing to serve people. It isn't that as the leader you get to order people around. I think in the last couple of years that has become very evident in the world. Not only in our country, but throughout the world. That there's getting to be this really strict, almost rigid hierarchy. It's always been there. In some sense, it's been subverted. Always been there. But in this country that's based on a democracy, we don't necessarily think in this necessarily hierarchical way. But I think the world has changed a little bit. And so I put myself in James and John's position, and I thought, you know, it may not have been beyond me. It may not have been beyond me to take a look at the world around and say, oh, I want to be part of this hierarchy. One of my favorite images is how light gets into our lives. And I thought about that this week in relationship to James and John. How does light get into them? How does the light of Jesus break in on them? Leonard Cohen has a saying in one of his songs that says, where it is broken, is where the light gets in. Ernest Hemingway has something similar and says that where we are broken and when we heal or put, are put back together, that's where we are the strongest. Hmm. So I wonder, how do we look at the world? 
how do we see the world? Do we see it as a place that is broken and can't possibly be fixed? Or do we see the world in a way that says, oh, there's all kinds of possibilities there. All kinds of possibilities. About 25 years ago, I was introduced to a photographer, not personally, but via video. His name is DeWitt Jones. He was a photographer for the National Geographic for a lot, a lot of years. Incredible artistic eye. His photography cap captured my imagination, but more so, his words capture my imagination. How he turns things around and how he lets the light in. And how he has learned how to look at the world with passion and compassion, he says. So we're going to watch a little video of a TED Talk that he did a couple of years ago. It talks about how he was changed, how he began to look at the world differently through the eyes of a young man. I was photographing on an island off the coast of British Columbia, and it wasn't going well. <laughs> the weather was gloomy, so were my pictures, but you know, I was getting ready to go out there again. I got a big camera bag and a huge tripod, and I looked up, and on the steps of the lodge where I was staying, there sat a five-year-old boy, a five-year-old boy with a very big smile on his face. And he looked down at me, and he said, do you have a camera? <laughs> I was festooned with cameras. You know? <laughs> I said, yeah, I got one. And then he raised his hand, and I realized why he asked, because he, he had a magic camera. It was yellow. It had a blue lens. It had a red eyepiece and a turquoise rewind knob with a little straw coming out of it. And he said, can I photograph with you? Well, that was about the last thing I wanted to have happen, but I didn't know how to say no, so I said, oh, come on. So we went down into the woods, and I got my first shot. And then this kid was so cute, he squeezed in front of the tripod like this, you know, backed up against it, raised his hand, did you get it? Yeah. <laughs> and again, that smile. Well, we kept going, me shooting and grousing, him shooting and smiling, you know. And it started to rain. It started to rain. And I was setting up, you know, what I thought was the last dismal shot of a dismal day. And he's just sitting next to me in the grass, looking very intently at all of my gear. And finally, he raised his face toward me, and he said, does your camera have juice in it? <laughs> I said, no. He said, mine does. <laughs> Sucked on that little straw. <laughs> God, his, his question almost knocked me over. Did my camera have juice in it? No, mine didn't, and his did. <laughs> I was the one who had the wrong perspective. I was the one who'd lost the passion to find that next right answer. And there wasn't anything more to say. I went out and bought myself a juice camera. <laughs> and every day, Adam and this camera remind me to celebrate what's right with the world. And every time I do, every time I allow myself to fall in love, you know, with all of it, I really do see a world of light and possibility. Come on, you've all seen it. Not just in the faces of your children and your grandchildren. It's out there all the time. And you know, the beauty of that world, our world, shows us a wonderful example of how to live of how to love, of a banquet laid, of a cup overflowing. And I know, I know that if we let that beauty fill us up, that we too will overflow. And it'll come out in everything we do, in the ideals we hold, in the passion and compassion we feel, in the love we are no longer afraid to express. That perspective, that lens, 
It'll change your life as it has changed mine. See that vision, my friends, and celebrate what's right with the world. A very captivating story, don't you think? So today, in thinking about James and John, their conversation with Jesus, their request to have anything granted to them that they ask of him, but to recognize it's there in their understanding of this world, in the hierarchy of the world, in the brokenness of the world, that Jesus breaks through and comes with something that is so totally unexpected. Jesus comes and says, if you're going to be the leader, you must be servant of all. Hmm. Put that alongside what, did, what DeWitt Jones said. That sometimes... We get so caught up in what we are doing, we forget to look outside until someone asks us a question and asks us this question. Do you have juice in your camera? Do you have juice in your camera? If not, today I invite you I invite you to sit back, to take a deep breath, and to recognize that the juice in your camera is the light of Jesus breaking through our brokenness so that we can look at the world with passion and compassion and be servant of all. Amen.
are bold to confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Together we pray for the world, for all those in need. O Holy One, the gift of your church has been handed down throughout the ages. Send your Holy Spirit upon all of us so that we are equipped with your gifts for the healing of the world. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Lord, grant us the wisdom and courage to care for the earth and all living things. Help us to act now for the good of future generations and to become faithful instruments of a new creation. As we take delight in the beauty of autumn with leaves of gold and red, help us never to forget the fragility of our planet. May our individual and collective passion care for your creation. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Today we remember all those who work towards peace and to lead this world with a servant heart. Bring justice for all who suffer violence, terrorism, persecution, discrimination, hunger, poverty, homelessness, and help us to create places of refuge for all people. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Today we give you thanks for all those who work for the healing of mind, body, and spirit among us. Surround and comfort all those who struggle with depression or anxiety, cancer, diabetes, dementia, those who are recovering from surgery and those who are preparing for surgery. May your hand of healing be with all. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We thank you for all those who give of themselves for this place. We especially give you thanks for those who work with our children, those who visit the people in their homes and in nursing homes. We give you thanks for those who care for this building and the property for those who lead our children, for those who sing and play instruments, for all who give of their hearts to this place. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We thank you for all those who have shaped your church and shared your gospel. Through the witness of all your saints, continue to inspire us with hope until we are all gathered at your feet. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Confident that you hear us, O oh God, we boldly place our prayers into your hands. Those prayers that we speak with our lips, those that are written on our hearts, those we can utter only with sighs. For we place them before you through Jesus Christ, our truth and our life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all.
together we pray. God of abundance, you cause streams to break forth in the desert and manna to rain from the heavens. Accept the gifts you have first given us. Unite them with the offering of our lives to nourish the world you love so dearly. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to take your bread or crackers, your grape juice or wine, so that you too can join in this meal. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy. Holy God, our bread of life, our table, and our food, you create a world in which all might be satisfied by your abundance. You dined with Abraham and Sarah, promising them life, and you fed your people Israel with manna from heaven. You sent your son to eat with sinners and to become food for the world. I invite you to take your bread and your wine in your hands. On the night before he died, our Lord and Savior took bread gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life given for us and his rising from the grave, we await his coming again to share with us the everlasting feast. By your spirit, nurture and sustain us with this meal. Strengthen us to serve all in hunger and want. And by this bread and cup, make of us the body of your son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit. In your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. This is the Lord's table, and you are all welcome here, for the gifts of God are free. As you take your bread, know that this is the body of Christ given for you. And as you take your wine, know that this is the blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, give you strength and peace today and into your life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of life and the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. 
And now until we meet again, receive this benediction. The Lord bless you and to keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve our God. Thanks be to God. Amen.